Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to introduce the Certified ESG Analyst 2.0 of um, EFOS today. And I would like to give you a brief overview of what we are doing in this program and why we think that it's a quite competitive and attractive uh, program. EFOS has a very long history in ESG integration. We started our Commission on Environment, Social and Governance in 2007 in Vienna already. So um, more than 10 years, 12 years history. Um, and the idea was to, to integrate non-financial factors in traditional analysis, in financial an analysis of the investment proce process. Um, and the idea is to, to design and to develop a training and qualification program for um, the investors. And this was done with the certified um, ESG analyst, um, where I had the pleasure and honor to be the director of this uh, program. We started that program in 2014 already. And um, since 2016, we have a full online version of the program established for different participants on a global basis. Um, why do we think that this is important for investment professionals, for analysts? Um, the World Economic Forum, they consider that insufficient education and the lack of valuation models are the most important barriers of ESG integration. And that's exactly where we think we start with this ESG program, the insufficient education. So we aim to overcome this challenge and deliver exactly these fundamentals of ESG that are necessary for investment professionals to fulfill their fiduciary duty to integrate material ESG factors into their valuation. And in 2019, we fully renewed um, the, the program, um, which I'm presenting you today, um, and to use different aspects that are covered in the first program, not that detailed. So what you can see um, right now is how we adapted the program, because we think that this new generation of the certified ESG analyst combines ESG knowledge and fundamental company analysis in valuation um, on two different levels. So we have a basic level, part number one, and an advanced level, part number two. And it's uh, developed by a group of uh, practitioners and um, me as an academic um, from different European countries, from France, from Italy, from Spain, from Germany, to also cover the different ESG cultures in the different regions uh, to better understand the needs of the national society members of EFAS. And this is what I'm going to present you now, what our findings, our results are. So what I just said, we have two different parts. The first part is an, an introduction for capital market participants with ESG um, experience that can build up on their experience and to deepen their knowledge on ESG factors. So what are we doing there? Um, we start with ESG and introduction. That means we give you an overview of uh, market trends we have, um, uh, of the different um, strategies um, of, of ESG. And we also discuss, is there a difference between um, profit and purpose? We don't think so. Um, we think that it's material and that's what we um, discuss in detail in chapter number two, where we look at the different um, recently important developments of ESG integration. So what kind of regulation are out there? How do market participants behave in that way? Um, this is something we cover here in the chapter number two. Chapter number three is also very important from the portfolio um, perspective because we cover ESG in different asset classes. If you look back in the last 40 years of uh, sustainable investment, um, equity investments were the most important part. But of course, if you look at the structure of portfolio, funds, uh, private equity, real estate became more and more important also for ESG investors. And that's why we cover the different asset classes in this module number three. Number four is on ESG reporting. And also there, a lot of things happened in the last couple of years. So we had new reporting standards. We have a mandatory um, CSR reporting in the European Union. Uh, we have the TCFD, for example. So all these different 
trends both from mandatory and voluntary perspective are covered here. Um, and we will give investors and investment professionals an overview of the quality of data that is provided here based on the, the reporting of companies and how to handle these different standards. And the last um, chapter in module uh, in part one is the investment process chain where we cover um, and structure the whole investment process in eight different steps. So we start with the general policy defined with the client and then we go through the different steps to see how can we integrate ESG in the different steps of the investment process chain to make it easier for investment professionals to adopt their own process and to see how can we integrate ESG in our daily business. And that gives you a very comprehensive overview if you participate in part one with an introduction to the most important aspects of ESG um, and it will help you to start ESG integration in your daily business. So in part number two is tailor-made for advanced ESG users. So after um, participating in part one, uh, you are invited to participate in part number two. Um, and we start with, with very um, important factors from our perspective, higher granularity, um, with approaches of data analysis. Because this is something you do if you analyze companies or states, so in your different asset classes, you have to check the, the, the data availability, what kind of data is out there. You have to develop an opinion on the quality of the data and the usage for your individual objectives you try to fulfill with your, uh, with your process. Next step is um, in module number seven, ESG integration in analysis. So after working with the data and having an idea of the data, the next step will be how can we integrate these different factors in the ESG analysis, both for environmental factors, for social and also for governance pillows. So how can we use it for corporate governance valuation? What is important for us? This will be analyzed in detail in module number seven. So in number eight is the core job of every uh, investment professional valuation um, and we will analyze different possibilities to integrate the data we structured, the data we analyzed in the valuation process with different models, with multiples um, or whatever kind of approach you use, you will find answers here of how to integrate it in your valuation model to come up with a um, valuation of the effect of this non-financial ESG information on financial information to see what kind of potential influence on the value of the asset uh, can be identified here. So chapter number nine is um, again the investment process chain but more in detail. After we gave you an overview of this investment process chain in module number one, module number two will be more detailed uh, with more information about how can we on an advanced level integrate ESG factors into the valuation model and then in the investment process chain um, and that will be helpful especially for advanced users who do already have uh, knowledge about the investment process chain. So and we'll end up with a case study and this case study, case study will cover all of the, the aspects we discussed in the different models before. So it will always be linked to what you learned before in terms of data um, availability, data analysis, integration and valuation model, the different steps of the investment process chain to support you on your daily business with this case study. And we are very convinced that this um, training program gives you a very good overview of what we are doing and what is happening on the market. And it also helps you a lot for your daily business with a lot of examples, um, a lot of um, link to, to practical experience and uh, this is what we'd like to uh, provide to you. So please don't hesitate to contact EFAS and I will be very much looking forward seeing you and uh, seeing you again in the modules and uh, I hope you will learn a lot and have a very high impact on your further work when you participate in this program. Thank you very much.